The most common form of filtration that most of us think about is mechanical filtration, and we might not know that that's what it is. So in this episode of Filtration 101, let's go over why mechanical filtration is so prolific in our hobby, and honestly, why it's probably always going to be that way. Hello everyone, this is Bentley, and in this episode of Filtration 101, we're going to cover mechanical filtration, and it comes in a lot of forms. In the previous episode, we talked about the big powerhouse when it comes to filtration, and that is biological filtration. Now, mechanical filtration is really, really common. Sponge filters, pre-filter sponges, sponge pads, there's a lot of them. Let's Perhaps some examples, just because why not, right? Props. So whether it's something like a sponge pre-filter, a sponge filter, the little bit of mechanical filtration that sits inside a hang-on back, or even something a little more advanced where we go with like custom cut sponge. This one you can see super coarse, you can see through it, right? Or you can even go uh, more... Uh, niche, but also like super, super high level approach to mechanical filtration. Something like this super fine foam material from Brightwater. So why, why are there so many of these things? Why is it pretty much every powered filter we get to has some form of sponge in it? Or when we look to hot rod a filter, almost always the first piece of advice is put that pre-filter sponge on it. And when we look at something like sponge filtration, all it needs is a little bit of air. And all of a sudden, something very simple, very humble becomes very powerful. Well, the big part about sponge filtration is really simple. This acts as not only a breeding ground for all of our beneficial bacteria, mostly aerobic in our cases. Very rarely is this kind of filtration media going to not have a well-oxygenated environment. So very rarely are we going to see anaerobic or anoxic filtration with these, but more importantly, what it's doing is filtering out particulates in the water. So fish waste, excess food. <laughs> you can see this tank behind me. Very, very cloudy. That's what happens when your filters plug up. And, and it comes in a variety, right? You can get uh, kind of medium porosity. Yeah, I know. Weird word, but yeah, trust me, it's a word. Uh, slightly more coarse like this. You can even see if we, we put this back here, you can start seeing a little bit of light through it and you can see up close just how coarse this stuff is. Come on camera, you can do it. It sees part of my face, so it doesn't want to focus. Uh, and then you have really, really fine filtration like this little sponge here. You really can't even see a pore out of this thing. Or you can go the complete opposite, right? You can go extremely coarse filtration. And this is easy, right? You can see the, the light from the tank behind it just coming through. Very, very coarse. Why would you choose coarse versus fine? This is an important part about our mechanical filtration. Coarse material is going to allow finer particulates to go through it. But the big thing is it's less likely to clog. Extremely fine material, the pores are small. And when you have those very small pores, bigger particulates or just over time particulates in mass will clog it up. And when it becomes clogged, you lose some of your flow. But more importantly, parts of your bacteria colony that are deep in that sponge, is it, the best part about something like this is that you have tons and tons of surface area for the bacteria to grow on. But if it's clogged on the outside, the internal colony is no longer going to get as much oxygen and can die off. This is a huge problem. Now, the huge benefit to this is that you can layer coarse sponge and fine sponge together to create a very, very effective particulate filter instead of having a cloudy mess like mine back here where I have a couple of finer sponge filters and they definitely need to be cleaned. You can have most of your powerhouse work being done by that coarse filtration and something like fine filter pad or even filter floss to get all the very, very fine stuff out. And in some cases, if you're using a sump, filter socks. We can get socks that are like in these tiny micron levels. And what's important about that is it allows us 
to filter out lots of particulates so that other parts of our filtration aren't going to get clogged up. Very often we combine mechanical filtration with biological media like your ceramic rings or um, Brightwater has a fantastic stuff that's uh, like a little kind of rounded stone that just has incredible, incredible surface area within it. Lava rock, bio hole ultimate. I mean, you guys can think of like a million different forms of biological filtration. When we combine these mechanical filtration devices with them, that helps make sure that all those particulates aren't getting into the biological filtration and clogging them up. Because once that water can no longer go through, your bacteria can't live and your biological filtration dies. And that's a huge problem in our tanks, right? Biological filtration, as we talked about before, that's the powerhouse. So why is it that mechanical filtration is so common? A couple of different reasons. One, being able to capture all those particulates makes it very easy to only take a small portion of your filtration, whether that's a pre-filter sponge, just a sponge filter, only one layer of sponge inside a hang-on back, whatever that may be, remove it, quickly clean it, put it back, and not have to worry about cleaning everything else that's inside that filter. Number two, it just makes our water prettier. With mechanical filtration, you don't have... <laughs> This cloudy mess behind you, you have beautiful crystal clear water if you want to. If you want to take the, the levels that it takes, you can have incredibly clear water to where you barely notice that water's there if you're doing it correctly. And that's all courtesy of mechanical filtration. Now, the best part is, of course, mechanical filtration also houses all that bacteria that helps process our ammonias and our nitrites into much safer nitrate, right? We talked about previously, if you didn't watch that episode, it's up in the corner now. Make sure, make sure you understand the difference in the three major bacterias that we have in filtration and, and where they where they matter the most, what they do. Uh, I very lightly go over the chemistry to make it very easy to understand, but it's important to understand this stuff. So when we look at mechanical filtration, what is like the best, right? Everybody wants to know what's the best mechanical filter or what's the best filter period. A lot of people go for ease of use. And a lot of people are gonna say either A, you get something like you hot rod a hang on the back and you put this this pre-filter sponge, you know, uh, I, I get mine from Aquarium Co-op all the time, but Corey preaches about hot rodding filters, but you've got lots of people who preach hot rodding a filter, why? Many, many reasons. Not only does it give us extra surface area for biological bacteria, but more importantly, it helps us make that maintenance on our filters easier. Now, if you want the easiest thing to service ever, that's a sponge filter. A simple sponge is really easy. It's just air and the sponge. The air moves the water. The sponge captures all the stuff, acts as a, a housing ground. They're very easy to clean. You can clean them out maybe once a month. Uh, you can even go more with a really, really coarse filter and be okay. But for the most part, it's pretty safe to do that once a month. If you have very heavy bio loads, you can literally just add an extra sponge filter. All you need is air. It's super, super simple. You'll notice that people with huge fish rooms almost exclusively use sponge filtration and air powered filters. And this can be like little breeder boxes that are full of, of, of different kind of mechanical media. There's a lot of different ways to do this, but almost always... It is mechanical media and air power because one, it's cheap and efficient, but two, it's very easy to service. And if you have a lot of tanks, servicing things quickly matters. You don't want to go through the process of peeling apart a canister on every single tank if you have 50, 60, 70 tanks, right? A sponge filter, you just put that bad boy in a bucket of old tank water, squeeze it a little bit for a couple minutes, you're done. Just put it right back in the tank. Easy peasy. The same can be done in our bigger tanks. Like let's say you have this tank behind you, you have a hang on the back filter on it. This little pre-filter sponge is going to save you a ton of grief because this you can clean once every two weeks or so, maybe even once a month, depending on how many fish you have. And you'll basically never have to actually service the inside of your filter. This will do all the work for you. And just like a normal sponge filter, this only takes a few minutes to clean out. Easy. Now, if you don't want to go that route, you're going to have things like canister filters or even hang on the backs, almost guaranteed. Something like this. This comes out of a Title 75. All the titles have this little like, 
kind of weird shaped piece of sponge in them. But you've got sponge and everything. Aqua clears, almost all of them, have some form of mechanical media because that's going to help make the water look clean. And for most of us, part of that aesthetic is really, really important. We want clean water so we can see our plants and see our fish and not have an embarrassing cloudy mess behind you like this. <laughs> so, I know this video is really simple, but the important thing to remember is this. Mechanical filtration filters out particulates. So, it is important to maintain those filters because over time they can clog up. Or, more importantly, all that biological stuff that's in there, fish waste, excess food, etc., over time does rot. And if you don't have like a really huge plant mass or a very light fish stocking, this can lead to spikes in nitrites and nitrates. This can become dangerous. However, the likelihood of this happening in a planted tank is extremely low. And for the most part, most of us are going to service our filters so often that you'll never have to worry about this. That's part of why mechanical filtration is so great. It's very easy to service. It's very easy to look at a mechanical filter and tell, oh, I need to clean that thing. Like this behind me. <laughs> and more importantly, we have a range of things we can do. So we can go less maintenance, very coarse, more maintenance, extremely fine, but very, very clear water. Or we can mix them if we're doing something like a canister filter, a sump, a hang on the back. We can put layers so that the water first hits a bunch of coarse filtration, kind of like a pre-filter sponge is typically going to do for you. Then gets into like medium and eventually fine to get that very clear, beautiful water. And you have to do a lot less work because each layer is doing a job for you. And typically you only have to really clean one layer and the other layers stay relatively clean for a long while. That is the beauty of mechanical filtration. I'm going to ask you this. Just think about this right now. Have you ever had a tank that didn't have some form of mechanical filtration? Almost guaranteed the answer is no. Now, there'll probably be some oldie moldies out there be like, well, back in my day with an underground filter, that was just biological and everything got sucked down in there and eventually you got to go in and gravel back. Well, secretly, that ungravel filter plate kind of acts as a form of mechanical filtration. Not quite the way we think of like sponges and filter floss and all that, but it is pulling those particulates down in an area and trapping them. That's mechanical filtration. Not the way we normally define it, but if you think about it truly by what mechanical filtration is defined as, that's what it is. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this short chapter. I know this is like simple and basic, but that is the goal of this series. Filtration 101 is kind of a high level, basic understanding of what each part of our filtration pathway is. The important parts, understanding the different bacteria, mechanical filtration. We're going to have a few other things coming up soon where we'll go to the basics of like what each filter type is and why that matters. Hang on backs, canister, stuff like that. So stay tuned. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you ring that little bell. That way you don't miss any of this stuff. Let me know in the comments down below. You guys know I love engaging with you guys. Uh, is there anything you learned from this? Did you know everything already? What's your favorite type of mechanical filtration? Maybe you're a big fan of just sponge filters. Maybe you love a hang on back with a pre-filter sponge. Uh, maybe you only like doing canisters with nothing but sponge filtration. So it's all mechanical in there instead of having like your, your ceramic bio rings or your bio home ultimates or your whatever it may be. Although I'm going to say, honestly, like a little bit goes a long way, guys. Trust me. Let me know in the comments down below. I love hearing from you guys. If you enjoyed this video, give it a little like. That helps with the whole magic YouTube algorithm. Gotta be a slave to that stupid thing. We poor YouTubers, man. <laughs> uh, if you didn't enjoy this video or you thought there wasn't enough science, how dare you, Bentley, not go into the most detailed 30-minute explanation of how mechanical filtration works, hit that thumbs down twice. And I'll keep making more of these videos. Simple, easy to digest, not that technical. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and stay awesome.